Welcome to the final installment of Denominations. This is a book written by my pastor friend, Brother James Job. Today we're going to be looking at the Worldwide Church of God, and he has in parentheses 1968. The Church of God International, 1978, founded by Garner Ted Armstrong after his father excommunicated him. Philadelphia Church of God, 1898, 1989. Church of the Great God, 1992. Global Church of God, 1992. United Church of God, 1995. Living Church of God, 1998. Restored Church of God, 1998. Grace Communion International, 2009. The Church of God, a Worldwide Association, 2010. Why don't you read uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 40, get things started out today. We talk about the origin. The worldwide church of God began under the leadership of Herbert W. Armstrong. Um, in the early 1930s, Herbert Armstrong began a ministry that eventually became the denomination. He had many unusual doctrines. These he taught so enthusiastically that eventually more than 100,000 people attended weekly services. After he died in 1986, church leaders began to realize that many of his doctrines were not biblical. These doctrines were rejected, and the church is now in full agreement with the statement of faith of the National Association of Evangelicals. To reflect these doctrinal cha- changes in, 19, in 2009, the denomination changed its name to Grace Communion International. Many members did not accept these changes. In 1995, hundreds of ministers and 12,000 members left to form a different denomination. In 1997, it was accepted as a member of the National Association of Evangelicals. Over 900 churches remain affiliated around the world. Concerning doctrinal beliefs of the Bible, the Holy Scriptures are by God's grace sanctified to serve as His inspired word and faithful witness to Jesus Christ in the gospel. As such, the Holy Scriptures are foundational to the church and infallible in all matters of faith and salvation. We believe that Scripture, both the Old and the New Testament, is inspired in thought and word, infallible in the original writings. When the Hebrew and Greek are translated into English, no one English translation preserves the complete essence of God's inspired thoughts. Most people have found that they benefit from using several translations rather than relying on only one. Research of these groups found use of 10 different English translations. Compare John 5.39, Proverbs 30, and verse 6. Concerning salvation, the gospel is the good news of salvation by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It is the message that Christ died for our sins and has made us his own before and apart from our believing in him and has bound us to himself by his love in such a way that he'll never let us go. We believe that all who truly repent of their sins in full surrender and willing obedience to God, faithfully accepting Jesus Christ as personal Savior, are forgiven their sins by an act of divine grace, given the gift of the Holy Spirit upon baptism into the body of Christ, which is the true church of God. Some people come to faith suddenly. Something clicks in their brain. A light goes on and they accept Jesus as their Savior. Other people come to faith in a more gradual way, slowly realizing that they do not trust in Christ and and um, and not in themselves that they do trust in Christ not in themselves for their salvation either way the Bible describes this as a new birth compare Philippians 3 verse 9 James chapter 2 and verse 10 uh, baptism the sacrament of baptism proclaims that we are saved by Christ alone and not through our own repentance and faith it is a participation in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ Grace Communion International baptizes by immersion we believe in the ordinance of the holy of water baptism by immersion following repentance through the laying on of hands with the prayer with prayer the believer receives the holy spirit and becomes a part of the spiritual body of Jesus Christ at baptism a christian is begotten of god and will be born into the family of god at the resurrection compare 1 corinthians chapter 1 verses 14 through 17 concerning the church The church, the body of Christ, consists of all who have faith in Jesus Christ. We believe in observing the New Testament Passover, the seven annual holy days given to Israel, those meats that are designated unclean by God in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14 are not to be eaten. As pastors equip the members for works of ministry, should they be training and equipping women to pastor and teach? The answer is yes. Many women have pastoral or shepherding skills. Compare Revelation 1, 11, Acts 20, verses 6 and 7, Colossians 2, verse 16. Concerning Jesus Christ, 
The Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was born of the Virgin Mary, fully God and fully human, and is the perfect revelation of the Father and the perfect representative of humanity. He suffered and died on the cross for all human sin, was raised bodily on the third day, and ascended to heaven. We believe that the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead after his body lay three days and three nights in the grave. Compare Hebrews 13, verse 8, Revelation 1, verse 5, John 10, verses 17 through 18. Now concerning the Trinity or the Godhead, we believe in one God eternally existing creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. The Godhead is actually composed of two personages, the God who became the father of Jesus Christ and the word who was made flesh and became God's son. We believe the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God and of Christ Jesus. God the Father is the first person of the triune God of whom the Son is eternally begotten and from whom the Holy Spirit eternally proceeds through the Son. Compare John 14, verses 16 through 17, uh, verse 26, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Concerning heaven and hell, we believe the only hope for eternal life for mortal man lies in the resurrection. At the end of the millennial, all who have lived not knowing God will be raised to physical life and given the opportunity for salvation. We believe that there shall be a resurrection of the just and unjust, the just to eternal life as spirit beings upon the earth, the unjust of the second death in hell, uh, Gehenna, fire, in which they shall perish in eternal punishment. We believe that all that at the return of Jesus Christ, a resurrection to uh, spirit life will take place for all who have been God's faithful servants. We believe that after Jesus Christ has ruled on the earth for a thousand years, there will be a resurrection to physical life of the vast majority of all people who have ever lived. We believe that after these people have had an opportunity to live a physical life, if they become converted, they too will receive eternal life. We also believe that those who reject God's offer of salvation will reap eternal death. Compare Luke uh, 16, verse 22 through 23, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Now, concerning uh, James, Brother Job's uh, last statements, these false denominations all believe that the Son and the Holy Spirit proceed from the Father, that we receive the Holy Spirit by baptism and in a second chance to be saved for the loss at the resurrection.